you sh- did you record that? I did. I recorded that. So awesome. Everybody can, everybody can see you moving around the office, pushing your chair around. <laughs> you know, great. it's just one of those things. <laughs> yeah. I, I have carpeting. I can't do that. That that looked really fun, actually. Um, Not only that, but a, my chair doesn't have wheels, so I really can't do that. <laughs> well, see, there you go. Because um, then you'd be tearing up your carpet. Right. Well, uh, this is the most silent chair that I can get. You know, podcasting and, and quiet go together really well, right? So I mean, they're supposed to. This yes. chair, this chair has no moving parts. It doesn't recline. It doesn't swivel. It doesn't roll. It is one single solid piece of plastic, uh, and it's not comfortable either. So it it doesn't encourage me to hang out in this chair for too long and have too long of a conversation with you, which I don't even I don't even know where we go from there. Because I've been having long conversations with you for a long time. <laughs> Have you seen these like new little conference booths, kind of individual pods? Oh yeah. yeah so totally. we we've started to actually implement them in some projects. Our user groups have been requesting them because they're packing the spaces full of as many people as they can. And foregoing quiet rooms, private offices, conference spaces, and things like that. And so they're like, in turn, let's have a few of these like little pod areas. Mm-hmm. And I just like, hey, do these things really work? So I was okay. actually visiting a kind of a, a WeWork kind of co-working space. Mm-hmm. And they had a few of them in there. I went inside and I was actually quite impressed at yeah. how dead they sound. In fact, actually, I happened to be on a, I took a meeting with some of the staff that's been working on some of these projects. In fact, the projects that were using some of these things in, and they were just like, oh man, you should record your, your podcast in this because your voice sounds amazing. And I was just on the computer. Just the crappy know, microphone. Just the crappy right. microphone on the computer. <laughs> right. And I was just like, well, if, if that if that sounds like that with just the crappy one, then once I actually get this microphone and all of the setup yeah. in there, who knows? It, it might be great. So maybe, maybe, you know, my clients are onto something and maybe I should get up myself a little recording booth. <laughs> A room, a room inside your office. So, no. so not only do you, yeah, not, you just went from a, a single office to a double office by there doing something go. like See? that. See, ooh, yeah. I can rent out some of that space. You just increase the value of your property. There you go. Something like that. Oh, you know. It's, I, funny, I would, it's funny because this is like the answer to open office, right? It's yeah. like put rooms inside of the open office instead of designing separate rooms. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is more oh. flexible, but it brings up a couple of issues. It brings up accessibility issues mm-hmm. and it brings up fire sprinkler issues, mm-hmm. right? Because it's a space inside a larger space oh, and yeah. that's a sprinkled space, oh, almost yeah. guaranteed, yeah. right? And yeah. it's a raised floor because it's a completely enclosed unit. And so now, now you just have a different set of challenges to deal with. Now, actually, there are multiple so as of right now, the building code actually looks at them as furniture. The building code is changing. But they have big ones. There oh, yeah. are big ones. You oh, can get they, conference they have, rooms they have, size. Yeah. They, they have four-person uh, mm-hmm. pods. They have accessible pods. We've we've worked with the manufacturer because the ones that we're putting in don't meet at FPA. And so they actually are within the 18 inches clearance of the sprinklers. So they need to be sprinkled. So they, and then they of course we need again. to readjust our sprinkler layouts and things like that, which I won't get into those, <laughs> but, <laughs> right. um, but, but yeah, they do yeah. have ones that you can even attach to the sprinkle sprinkler system, oh, yeah, but yeah, man, yeah. I can't, I can't imagine what that's <laughs> like. That's gotta be yeah. kind of a, in a retrofit situation. That's if if you had to maintain the operability of a space and put these in and connect it to the sprinkler system, I mean, yeah. what are the chances that's going to go right? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. And, but I mean, it is interesting because that is the odd little trend that we don't want, you know, 
you know, we don't want private offices. Everybody needs to. But we do. To, yeah. It, but, but, but we, we want do. a place that we can do private phone calls and small conferences. But How but there are benefits to it, right? Like the it's flexible as far as if, especially yeah. if you don't have to hook it up to a sprinkler system, you can move them around and you can change yeah. your layout and adapt your office as needed, right? Since going through this exercise of working with on this lab building. Yeah, we've been working with the PIs to retrofit the <laughs> retrofit the new building that we built that we built without them, and now we're building it with them mm-hmm. and retrofitting. There's some nothing things. wrong with this with this system at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so <laughs> the order the, of events this seems this seems ideal. <laughs> and, and so the scenario is is like, oh, well, we need this space and we need that space, but we don't want this space. We don't want that space. And so the creativity of what we're doing for the working environment, the the actual office side of the labs, is, is it's pretty ingenious. I mean, we're coming up with some pretty creative things in the You're team. Patting yourself on the back right now. You're just no, 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 no. This is definitely not me. This is you know the, <laughs> okay. the, t- the team that I work with. They're amazing, and they mm. you know come up with some really creative things because it's. I mean, because you're right. I mean, the, the the drive, the desire to have open office spaces, but still have the kind of closed office space environment or that ability to say, oh, I want to take a private phone call, or I'm going to do a, a Zoom call or a conference call with a bunch of different people. And you, know, you got people like zipping back and forth behind you or, or, right. or yeah. today. Distractions, uh, right. Or today I was on a call. And it happened to be that a friend of mine, I saw her in the background talking to somebody else. And so I texted her. I was like, are you in the office? She says, yeah. I was just like, I can see you behind so-and-so's shoulder. And then she's like <laughs> turned around, weird. you know. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like making faces and stuff on the, in the middle of this meeting. I was just like, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I did. And it was actually yeah. fun. Brought a little bit of levity to a, a tense moment in the meeting. So. It's interesting what you what you brought up there about this idea of okay, so you're in a new phase of the project. There are way there's new people involved because <laughs> it's going to be their space. They weren't yes. involved in the original design of this space, so things are constantly changing. This is architecture. Yeah, this is how it goes on so many projects. I mean, yeah. you you were there when we were working on the design of that math and science building and. Yeah we were sketching a STEM center and they just wanted a STEM center. That building was done and built and occupied and they still didn't know what they were going to do with that space. Mm. Right. And yeah. And this is like a community college that has students in this building all the time. And they're just, they, they knew they wanted the space. They had the budget to do it. They knew they wanted something that had like these ideals of, you know, it's, it's like, it's a community space. It's going to be on the ground floor where everybody can use it. There's easy flow in, easy flow out. Maybe there, and it was a bunch of maybes. Like maybe we'll do this. Maybe it'll be a STEM yeah. center. Maybe it'll be a study hall. Maybe it'll be a, you know, tool resource center. Maybe it'll be a shop. Maybe it'll be all these things. And they just couldn't nail it down during the whole design and construction, which was years. Yeah. And then finally, I think they, they ultimately did figure out what they were going to do with it. But this, this, concept came up on my other show and it was that AEC is an ad hocracy. <laughs> this this process uh, that you're talking it. about, right? That's what it is. It's just yeah. constant yeah. wrench thrown into the system. Let's uh, there's a new challenge. We're always up for the challenge, it turns out. Architects sure. seem to love challenges and we're going to run with it and and try to figure it out. And like you're saying, there's brilliant ideas coming up. When just when you would think everyone would be sick and tired of this. It's like no, that, that's not how it works either, right? It's oh, like yeah. we just keep going and going and going and still coming up with great ideas even after after it, the deadline, yeah. if it it might be. It, it's, it's like you're a doing an adaptive reuse on your own building that you just finished the design on. Yeah. Because I have the same thing. You know, we, we did a... We did a nursing and... You know, it was, it was an addition to kind of a series of school of nursing. And so we did the, th- the third building of the school of nursing. And they were still evolving some of this program, but we were done with construction. And yet they were still evolving some of the program that they wanted in there. So after the fact, 
a pretty large portion of some of their sim labs, they decided to tear down the walls and put in a robotics lab, a medical robotics lab. And it was, so I remember having the photographs when I was punching out the building, which it was one thing. And then a year and a half later, it's a completely different use, completely different design, completely different feeling to that floor just because of their, oh, we didn't really know what we were going to use it for. And we went ahead and finished the build only to tear it out and start over again. <laughs> right. Okay. And, I just have to pause this for a second. So hold, hold on, hold your thought. But you just said a phrase that there's going to be people who are not in architecture or their students and they, they heard it and they're like, wait, what? You just said you were punching out the building. Ah, <laughs> no context. There's no context. Yeah, yes. you're, you're, you're pu- yeah, hold up your fist. You're punching out the building. Hold up your fist. This will be the thumbnail for the episode right here. And <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice in focus fist. And, and the, the idea of punching out a building could be taken maybe out of context. So why don't you explain what that is before you jump back into your thought? Well, the initial, the, I am curious uh, how you're that struggling actually- to, yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm actually curious on how you, like how that phrase came about, because mm. essentially what it is, is you're walking through and you're inspecting the building for the level of completeness and to make sure that everything has been designed and installed as, as per design. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, what you create is called a punch list, which is a series of items or a series of deficiencies that the contractor is obligated to fix to meet their contractual requirements. So that's what a punch list is. And then that what comes out of the punch list is a set of as built drawings, which means it is, there is a set of drawings that they've taken from your construction set of documents. And if there's any modifications or anything else from that, then they create an as built set of saying, this is how we've built it. So then the owner or future architects or whoever who might be working on this have an accurate account of what that building actually is. And so the punch list and the as built go hand in hand. However, it it has to come from like this idea of like punch cards or something, doesn't it? It, it just it seems might. to me. I don't or, I don't know for sure. People can leave comments cause, on this or, episode. I would love to hear the real answer. Or the level of anger sometimes that happens when you're walking through and creating <laughs> this deficiency list, realizing that there's more deficiencies than there is time throughout the day and you want to punch something. Isn't that always the case? There's always more deficiencies than there is time. Yeah, yeah. We're actually <laughs> because it's yeah. it's this is like when you walk into when you know you you buy some builder home and there's blue tape everywhere, right? It's like these are all the instead that of a punch the, list, it's just yeah. scraps of blue tape. No, no, we we use the blue tape. You do both. We use well, the blue it, tape. It's nice because then there's like an actual location. So kind we'll of take a photo to we'll, the thing. That, so basically, we'll typically when we're doing a punch list, we'll walk around with our probably an iPad and it's got our software downloaded on it and it's got all of the floor plans. And so we can tag the floor plans with each deficiency, take a photograph of it. It tags it to that location and then we can actually write something up. And then not only do they have an actual floor plan that has a tag with all of the photographs keyed into it, but then it also generates a report that basically says, here's your deficiency list, here's where they are, here's the room, and all that other stuff integrates well with with Revit. And you're able to create a a pretty detailed version because I remember back in the day, and then here's the back in the day. I remember back in the day when you were doing this all in Excel. First, I was, you would, we would print out, we would first create either a Word or an Excel document, print it out right on all of the issues that we have and then like take photographs of them and then mark down what photographs that we actually had for that particular issue and then do a very laborious compiling of the issues. Yep. And that act is called 
punching the punching building. And <laughs> that, that act is called punching. This is like you Google, you Googling, you're Googling on Google, you're, you're punching the punch list, right? So back to your story, you were punching the building, I, and I interrupted you to explain what punching was, but uh, I, think, I think we've well, we were just, rabbit hole Well, we were just enough. talking about that interesting, the out-of-sequence changes that occur right. on more buildings than you could possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are things that we anticipate, obviously, in like the adaptive reuse, renovation, preservation fields, that mm-hmm. you're going to be doing modifications to buildings. You don't really ever anticipate doing modifications to a building you just finished. Right. In a brand new building at that. Right. You know. You I thought mean, it was done. You thought yes. you were done. Yeah. You are not nowhere close to being done. Thought you were done and they pulled you back in and said, we want you to change all this. Well, how many times have you been involved on a project? Kind of rhetorical, right, at this point. Yeah. But it's, it's like uh, there are a set of individuals making all the decisions who are not the actual users of the space of who sh- whom should be making the decisions. And, oh my God. and those, those are not really clean columns ever, right? Yeah. Because staff yeah. leave, staff come in, people retire. Others were waiting for those retirements to happen, and they have ideas that they've been waiting to implement. Right, right. And they could never do that when the gray hairs were there, like for, as examples, like this happens all the time. But a lot of times also there are these situations where you're dealing with the client who is not the actual user of the space and they do what they can on their end to not involve the actual users of the space because they know the process will go smoother if they're not involved. And that's just maybe uh, how they think about it, whether it's true or not. But so a lot of times it is true, right? It's like, a lot of times you know, it is true. there's there's politics and there's seniority and there's loud people and there's quiet people and they don't, yeah. it's really hard to actually build consensus in those situations. But at the same time, like it sounds to me like the process that you went through is people made decisions, oh my. didn't involve the actual users. And now because of that, you're undoing and redoing a bunch of stuff. There was a lab building that I was doing. In fact, it was the very first lab building I'd ever And so it was a learning process in its own right. But then, and this is where I found kind of like that, that uh, instance that you're talking about, like the users and maybe not involving them. I started to under, understand that dynamics, understand those, the, the politics behind all of that. And, and I know that you've experienced this as well. When you're, you're dealing with these principal investigators, these PIs, and they say, okay, well, Evan, you get a, your own office, Cormac, you're going to get your own, but Evan is so kind of worried that Cormac is going to have a bigger office than, you know, than Evan is going to have. So, (laughs) and so they like come and they'll measure out. It's just like, he's got five more inches in his office than I do. And, and I have actually seen where they will move it, you know, to split the difference between the two. So you have two and a half inches on this side, two and a half inches on this side, extra for each of them so that you have that, that space equity. And, you know, and it, it was interesting because there was this one time where two of these principal investigators just did not get along, but they were going to be sharing the same floor and everything was scrutinized down to the micron of an inch. On because how, they're scientists. Because they're scientists. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and even even to this day, you know, in talking about in second guessing the mechanical engineers on the design of the systems because of the latent heat loads that are coming from all of their equipment. And they're saying, well, because of the, you know, equipment, our analysis says that you really can't have all of this equipment in here. You need to. It says, no, 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 no. We've been doing this and we know that it's going to work. And... No, no, uh, it's no, just... no, it's not going to work. Is what we're, t- we're, yeah. t- <laughs> we're telling you the actual we, science we've... of it. <laughs> I was trying to explain to somebody sometime um, the use of, or, or at least the challenges of using a chilled beam system. And do I have to like stop and pause and uh, <laughs> no, no. We'll okay, just good. let people look right. that one up. All right. So they're using a chilled beam system. And 
because of the humidity control that you need in that and being able to mm. exhaust the air out and, and there's limits to, and in this particular case, there was limits to the occupant, occupant count within the room. And as you know, in, in designing like lab buildings and things like that, you may say the, the code may say the occupancy is one. Mm -hmm. The ADA may say occupancy is one. Mm -hmm. The user group will say, yeah, but I can fit five people. Right. <laughs> totally. And, and I and so and we're trying will. To, I will put and five will. people in there. Yeah. And they're in the, so then they're saying, it's like, no, no, we need, we want you to show five, five chairs, five, five desks, desks in, right. in there. Just show it. We're like, no, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, this level of liability. There's all of this other stuff. We don't want to be the one responsible for when you do shoehorn those five people in there and it starts dripping over your head because there's too many people and the humidity can't keep up with it. And so yep. condensation starts building up on this chilled beam and it just starts dripping down on your computer. And you're now complaining because your supercomputer that you've been working on just exploded. Let alone there's a fire and everyone's got to get out and the exits aren't wide enough and, 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 right? I, I, so we were reviewing spaces for one user group in, on one project where we walk into the office or we, sorry, let me reverse that. We couldn't walk into the office because there's three people in the office and the way that they had the office and all of the storage and everything set up is the person at the farthest interior side, the two other people had to get up and leave the office for, for that them to person get out. to go. So <laughs> this if, is like an airline row, like it, like you have a window seat. Totally, totally. <laughs> totally. It's just like, excuse me, I got to go to the bathroom, I got and go. everyone has to get up and leave the office for you to get out. And it's so I'm, I'm thinking when I'm looking at that, I'm you know thinking about the way that the the office is used, and so what if chair number one or possibly even chair number two are on a conference call and chair number three, the guy furthest inside the office has got to get up and go to the bathroom or it's lunchtime or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever. And yeah. he's got to say, excuse me, I've got to put you on, I'm going to turn my camera off for a second and let this guy out. And then you're like moving the, <laughs> you know, moving it around, you know, just trying to show everybody. It's just like, you know, I, I've got to like pause for a second, you know, just like, the weirdness behind so many of these asks, so many of the desires that people like, they're like, oh, don't worry about it. We survey things that like, you're not looking for any code violations, are you? Ha, ha, ha. They're like, right. trust me, I <laughs> yeah. don't want to see what you guys are doing. Yeah, I don't want to know. Absolutely. Have, have you, so this idea of the ad hocracy, AEC oh, being an ad hocracy, like, so this, this process that you're going through is ad hoc. It's like, nobody saw yeah. this coming. This is now additional services, or maybe it's a new contract. I don't know what it is, but this also applies to our firms. It applies to the way we approach problem solving on projects. It's yeah. just it, because the design process is not linear, right? Like a right. lot of people think right. it's it's these really clean phases. There's there's CDs. <laughs> I say CDs like that was first, but I'm I, that's conceptual design. It's then there's some, SDs. Some people, <laughs> some people jump straight to CDs. Let's exactly. Just, yeah. Okay, so conceptual design, schematic design, design development, construction documents. That's a really clean. And these things are in these perfect rows and columns and. Yeah, there's some dependencies, but it's all going to. And then there's the reality of it, which is like it's it, it's a squiggly line that goes all over the place. And then somehow we make it out at the end because like right. time's up and the budget's gone. Right. That's what it's actually like. And in this, I, I just wonder, like, how, how do we even approach trying to make sense of make it better? It's not even make sense of it. I think we actually do a really good job making sense of it in spite of it being so weird. But it's it is a very difficult problem to kind of just refactor it all, and and because we, you know, you, you're talking about your clients who who just learn to live like this, right? They learn to live with three people squeezed into a phone booth to actually get quote unquote work done, and we do the same thing, but in different ways. Like we just get used to the tools absolutely sucking to use mm -hmm. and okay yeah. i guess we're still going to use them because it's the only tools we have it, it's it's same problem 
think almost right. It's it's just a different way to look at it. So man, oh, I, yeah. th- this ad hocracy idea goes all the way down the ladder, and it's throughout Absolutely. the entire process. It's just like what what fires are we going to put out today? Kind of at some point, it just gets to that. Like you start off the project, you're excited. It, you've got sky's the limit. It's going to be super clean and fast. We've done this before. We know how to do this. And then it's like at some point, like <laughs> everything just blows up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then you you have to figure it out on a day by day basis. Remember, we used to use Trace, and yeah. they're probably I've there's, got some rolls rolls right up here. Yeah, I've got some. You see those rolls behind me? There's a yeah. one of those big, yep. uh, you know, thirty six inch rolls behind me, and you probably don't have a clean enough desk to put it on though. Like, <laughs> not to actually enough roll desk. it out. <laughs> use a thirty six inch roll. <laughs> desk is clean. It's just what, uh, big yeah, right. Put your camera yeah. down. <laughs> I, actually, I would be, I would be honored to show everybody my clean desk. Mm, everything doing around some it. Cleaning. Nice. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. But, but, we used to like do all of these drawings with layers on them, and we would mm-hmm. you know tape them and layer over them and tape them and layer over them. Well, so since that's gone, and we especially since we've gone kind of digital and remote or hybrid and we're doing a lot of like conference calls digitally through zoom or teams or whatever else we're using and i i I had somebody like come to me and send me a drawing that we did during a meeting and it was it it literally looked like you took a pot of spaghetti and threw it up against some paper. And they were just like, what are we talking about here? I don't understand. Now I looked at it and I kind of remembered everything. And I'm like, oh, and if you remember, this is a room and that was a room. And then, you know, they wanted to, you know, put a corridor through here and all of this. Other. Nobody but labeled looked, anything. But it looked like <laughs> this, you know, like it was right. just this amoeba of, of different colors and shapes and lines Line weights, and everything yeah. else. And. Right. Everything about it was, it was just an absolute mess. So it was an ad hocker. It was just of just the way, and it was just, that was sort of the way, you know, we used to do it back then that we're still sort of doing now. And, you know, it's just, it, when people outside, and I I'm, I'm, think I know where I'm going with this, but okay. people, people outside looking in to like what we do will look at us and say, no, no wonder this is dysfunctional. I mean, look at the way you guys communicate. Look at the way you guys work. Look how, you know, and you're, you're like a hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it's just this, it's just this linear, th- you know, not, not even linear thought. It's, it's just this amoebic yeah. thought of like, oh, here, there, there. Right. Shiny red ball. Like all of this stuff that just kind of keeps it at that kind of like almost ad hoc like level. And it's just the digital that. version of of the old analog, right? Like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Like there, there is. We talked about this idea of pseudo productivity, right? And spending your day in your mailbox, just sending emails and calling it getting work done, right? Yeah, it, yeah. And it's it really isn't, right? You're not working on a project. You're not solving a client's problem. You're not doing the real value of an architect. There, you're just responding to noise, right? And I mean, it's it's kind of like that. Like you, that is another version of the layers and layers and layers and layers of unreadable sketches, right? It's it's just like it's it's hard. At some point, you have to become really good at deciphering and cutting through the crap, yeah, to make sense of it. And and I feel like a lot of times we're doing that after work or on the weekends when we can actually yeah. get work done because we can't do that during the work week. Actually, I'll give you a direct quote from a meeting today. And it was, I just finished sifting through all of my emails from, from vacation. I didn't really, I didn't respond to any of them. I just read through them. Now I still have to spend a few more days to actually go through and respond. (laughs) Right. So it was, it's one of those like, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's like, people are like, well, why are you checking your your uh, email during vacation it's just like because if not that like it's just gonna like build (laughs) up and build up and build up to dig your way out of that pile sometime yeah right i actually what was interesting is i had somebody tell me that their out of office email or their out of office message for their email would be 
I'm on vacation. Any email received while I'm on vacation will be automatically deleted. Yep. And if you want to respond to me, resend this email when I'm back in the office so mm -hmm. I can give you my undivided attention. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I will be spending more of my time, just like this guy said, sifting through emails for days. Yeah. And still not being able to service or respond to anybody because all he was trying to do is catch up with what was the information sent and then starting to like log in and prioritize. It's like, how am I going to respond to this? How, what are the fires I need to put out? Who's got to do this and all that other stuff. And I loved that notion that don't worry, I'm not going to listen to any of that crap. <laughs> Have you ever run this experiment yourself? And, and you don't even need an autoresponder to do it, right? It's just like, I, I ignore enough emails and if they yeah. truly matter, they will send another one. And a lot of times they don't because they didn't need you anyway. Right. Right. And that, so, that is the, the true crime of email right there. My, my, <laughs> my favorite, exactly. My favorite email response is, Cormac, following up on this email that I sent last week. Yeah. You mean the Thank week you that the I reminder. was on, you know, the, you, you mean the, the week that I was on vacation, you know. Right. It's like, do you think I was going to, you know, respond to it then? Yeah. Um, I actually got an email on the 5th of July, which was a Friday, which was a non-working holiday. And it was asking me to do a bunch of stuff. We've talked about emails in the past being somebody else's to-do list for you, right? Like yes. that's a yeah. lot of times what email is. And it was like just checking in on the email that they had sent when I was on vacation before that as well, which I wasn't really on vacation. I was down south moving my mom right in 120 right. degree heat in Palm Springs. And so I wasn't I wasn't responding to email then either because I, I had other things to do. And so sure. then one comes through on the 5th saying, I'm checking in on this and here's what I need. And it's like, and you're sending this on the 5th of July? Like that does, what are you expect here, right? And so I, I ignored that one. I just straight up ignored it. Like this is not an okay email to send. <laughs> <laughs> they did send up another one. Hey, just following up on this. And it never was rude or anything, but it was like, sure. It, it wasn't appropriate to send it when they did. And and maybe it was just like a top of mind. And so they did it. I, I, I don't really care either way, but, but there's too much email that comes through that actually doesn't even need to have your name on it. Right. It's so just I've somebody actually, replied all. Yeah. So I've actually resorted to, and I've seen this. And so I did try this experiment where if I've got something in my head and I just need to get it out, yeah, I probably should like create a reminder. And then that reminder is like, when you get back into the office, please send this information. But what I've at least done is I'll, I'll send it off and I'll say, look, I understand that this is vacation. I don't expect you to do this now. Please don't do this now. You know, just, I just need to get it out in the, out I just, into the exactly. universe. I was like, before <laughs> I forget it, I yeah. want to just send this out. I am not expecting a response. And in fact, I actually chastised somebody when they did respond to me. I'm like, I didn't really want the response. Right. I just wanted both of us to have it in our head, thinking about it so that when we did come back and have this conversation, that at least the things that I was thinking about that we needed to do could be addressed. Just because, you know, as, as we've talked about, like the design process, the, the creativity process, none of that is linear. And sometimes, like, I will literally wake up in the middle of the night and say, yeah, got to remember that. And then either A, fall back to sleep and completely forget, yep. or B, I do a, a voice memo or oh, wow. write something down mm -hmm. and address it later. Yeah. Or sit and <laughs> stay up all just sit in bed staring. It's just like, okay, let's think about that detail. What do I do? <laughs> let's figure it out. <laughs> now that it's top of mind, I'm going to figure this out. Exactly. Okay, we got to stop talking about email. I have, a, I have one, one last question regarding punch lists. I guess we'll go back to punch lists. Do you have any good stories about punch lists? Let me see if my, my camera does it. My camera likes I faces. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Um. If you ever have, do you have any stories of punch lists kind of going bad or going wrong, yeah. like an experience with that going wrong? You know, you're saying, hey, Corman, 
Would you like to sit and talk about some, you know, some incriminating frustrations that you've had, you know, during construction and administration? You go, go back, back past the statute of limitations. You just got to go back a little. <laughs> Something that I've seen often, which is the biggest frustration, isn't even necessarily, well, actually, I do have one specific detail, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this other idea or notion or, or experience out, is... When the contractor, and I apologize to any contractor who's listening, but come on, you know that you guys do, um, <laughs> is that they will say it is ready for the architect to punch. Now, yes. this is it is after. It is now ready for the architect to tell me all the things that I need to complete, even though it's all in the documents. <laughs> yeah, even though... <laughs> They're hoping you they miss should, things. They should have done a pre-punch list. Yes. That is what a punch a, list actually is. Exactly. Not, yes. not, a, not for an architect to come by and find all of the deficiencies that work. you've created. Right. It is to verify that there are no deficiencies. Well, and, and, and from my understanding, and I guess I could be wrong about this, but a punch list actually should be created by the contractor to say, these yeah. are all the things that still need to be done right. by XYZ time, by yes. XYZ person, yeah. Yeah. And, here's, and here's how we're going to accomplish and, that. And it's not generated by the architect. And I won't say if it's current or past, but a team of architects from the office have been, let me restate that, have in the past quite possibly have uh, gone out and taken the contractor's 400 plus um, item punch list and added another four to 500 items onto that list, which again, they shouldn't be doing. It, it is not their job to do the actual deficiency list. It is the contractor's job to do the deficiency list based off of the documents that, as you said, were created. But I'll never forget this one where we had a, we had all of this wood paneling in kind of the lobby space and in this main corridor of the ground floor of a building that we were doing. Beautifully detailed. Some of it was acoustical grow perfed wood and some of it was just uh, quarter sawn oak. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And they, we had a monitor and it was supposed to be where either they had it at, at portrait or landscape mode and all of that other stuff. And like the, the mounting and everything else was supposed to be kind of hidden behind the TV. And so what they did was, is they, they did that and all of that stuff was hidden behind the TV, depending on which orientation. However, what they did was they made a mistake. So they cut out the whole of the actual wood behind it. And so if it was in landscape, you'd never see it. But all, because these were, these monitors were for information and wayfinding, they were all portrait. And so when you turned it portrait, you saw the little cutout sticking out the side and you saw the, the fire rated wall behind it and the, the taped jip and all of that other stuff. And then what did they ask? Well, what do we do to fix this? Yeah. They ask you, <laughs> well, what do we do to fix it? What are, are you kidding? You fix it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> was I the one with the sawzall? The oh, a dull man. sawzall with that because look how gnawed up this beautiful wood looks. Oh. And now that you're asking. like an expensive fix. Well, yeah. Actually, we, you know what we, they ended up doing? They ended up buying a big mod. Oh, my God. It was their fix. That's a cheap solution. That is probably the cheapest solution by far. It worked. It worked. Yeah. Jeez. Someday when they want to take that down, though, there's going to be a big hole there and you're never going to get those panels again the same. Yeah. Nope. nope. What a mess. We had a, a punch list on a library project where it was a small contractor. It was a small library. It was in a small town. Hard to find a contractor for this project, in fact. And I think it was previously or it was a residential contractor who took on this commercial remodel project. And it was an extensive remodel. So like new roof, like taking a, you know, a slump block, um, it, 
project that was like a it was like a strip mall that we tore the roof off and put a pitched roof a double pitched roof in different directions with clear story windows and you know exposed structure and everything and did all kinds of things wrong like <laughs> painted the wrong things the wrong color um you know there there was a lot of things and so generated the punch list again we generated the punch list right our, our project manager did they didn't do it they literally addressed zero of the items on the punch list and just walked away. And I don't know if they never got their last 10% or what, but I imagine they were so far like underwater at that point on the project. They were just like, it wasn't even worth them doing it for the final payout. And so the client, I guess, said, we're occupying this, we're opening, we're going to live with this. So that happens too, right? Like It's yeah. just like... There's so many things where you're just like, no, that's not right. That's not how we designed it. It's not what the client expects. It's not going to work for them. It's not going to work for the long term on this project. There's like all of these things. And yet there's still like bad behavior, <laughs> which is just walking away from the project at some point. Like it's done enough. We're out. Same project. But the entire, the entirety of the law. So ceilings micro micro perfed wood that was already pre-stained it was coming from overseas and we had to match all of the the locally sourced and stained uh, wood that were all that made up all of the wall panels to match the the ceiling they did beautiful mock-ups matched them it took a couple of different tries but they matched everything in the mock-up and the ceiling all looked great together. And I was with a coworker who he just let it rip as we rounded the corner after it was all installed and we were coming to inspect the, the space and echoing through, and I'm not going to actually say the words, but you know, WTF as loud as you can, those, the words, not the acronym, <laughs> uh -huh. as loud as you possibly can to stop every single solitary construction worker in the building, in a four story building, stopped and basically kind of came and heard the echo of this profanity like floating through the air. And it was because it was two shades darker than the ceiling mm. and even though we quality controlled it we and then the I, I will say the 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 contractor did step up and offer to basically eat the cost and and repair it but the owner we've got to occupy it yeah and we're just going to accept it and took a, a massive credit a seven figure credit back but which, you know, of course, I guess sort of worked out, but it was still one of these things. It's just like. These things happen and then the owner accepts it and it is in the final thing. And then we, and then we walk through the building. We're like, what was that architect thinking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, you know, and, and so that's how, you know, like I've evolved in this. It's just like, look, I, I, I get it. Yeah, you know, because that, again, that same building. No, I you didn't, don't. You didn't like the the steel treatment on on Millennium Park. <laughs> I didn't. On the maybe uh, maybe Pernilla. the owner accepted it. <laughs> maybe the owner should have said, "Hey, hey, uh, architect, you do know that it gets wet around here and really windy and stuff. Maybe the uh, coating you use on this exposed steel should last." Oh, You're still sorry. blaming the architect. I'm, I'm... I like. It. <laughs> Who wrote this? <laughs> you know, now I, I don't know whether or not there was a substitution request for something different, right. but I'm just saying. Yeah. That see, happens. see, now you ask me that question and now I've just got like, now they're, they're all flooding. like waiting at the gate. She's like, <laughs> oh, wait, it me, it took me. Another episode, another so episode. Like, no. <laughs> Good stories. Like, now I'm going to have nightmares on all of the different problems that I've like faced because First, I was thinking, oh, just these little things here and there. I was like, no. What about that uh, exposed steel that they look like they wiped chunky peanut butter all over? 
again for another time.